the French Foreign Legion exists more in the history books than it does in the modern day. It has the reputation of being a place of shady, wild warriors willing to do anything without a past, or even as innocent as simply a place to disappear to and get a new lease on life if one needs it. But it is always seen as a place of adventure and danger. The Legion is seen as a bunch of foreigners who are all bound together by the essential will to kill, fight, and die for a new lease on life. This is still mostly true in the modern Legion, but the Legion has changed. While it is still a wild bunch of adventurers, dregs, and runners, as mentioned, it is now a organized military force. It isn't simply just the Legion. The Legion has many different subdivisions. It has rules. It has organization. And in this video, I will seek to demystify the Legion and try and make it more of a modern-day reality than a legend of the past. The Legion was founded on March 9th, 1831, by the order of the King Louis-Philippe of the French Empire to counter an issue that modern France was facing and fill a military role that was needed in many of the new wars. This issue they were trying to solve was the unwanted people filling the streets of many cities of France at the time, some even with military experience, some more revolutionaries from Germany, Britain, Spain, all on the run needing a place to hide. Many were veterans of the Napoleonic War, and even more were refugees from said war. This was also not helped by the wealth of immigrants from non-European nations also clogging up the streets. Without any citizenship, without paying any taxes, they were simply being a burden on French society and many people were complaining. This problem coincided with the new kind of conflict in the Algerian War, which was not two nations facing each other in the field of war where the people would meet and fire at each other like before, but where the French people would hide in their villages, occasionally going out but not finding anyone, only for Bedouins to raid said towns. Now this game of cat and mouse is not sustainable for the French, so they needed a group which had a large manpower base who would be able to defend and maintain the fortifications while the main French army goes out hunting for bandits. And this is the role the French Legion served simply as a defensive and engineer group, not as the elite combat division we know it as today. And this also served yet another purpose, which is a place to put the old Napoleonic officers, as these officers' political opinions were not conducive to modern-day Europe, but they did not want to totally disgrace them by simply kicking them out of the military. They sort of shoved them away to the Legion, what they saw at the time as dead-end job. But through the skill and ambition of, the, of these officers and the extraordinary performance of the Legion, they developed themselves into two new roles which proved critical for the future of warfare. The first of these roles would be in the Carlist War, when the Carlists would hide in the mountains and make small attacks with convoys for the mountains. They, the French Legion and its innovative officers realized that this war will not be won by moving columns towards each other because that you can't move a column through the mountains of Spain. But they realized if you split up into your platoons, a platoon can move very easily through the mountains and ambush even larger groups if they have much worse footing. And this role was actually quite critical in beating back the Carlists in northern Spain. And the second role they developed was part of the Algerian War, as I said, with the defensive and engineer role they originally founded with, they were exemplary in this and developed their willingness to die for the cause and proved to the French higher-ups that they were men of a higher caliber than even many of the French regulars. The Legion's recruitment methods are still very much the same as they were when they were founded, granted with some differences. This is where the Legion gets most of its reputation and legend from, men who are not of their home country, fighting hard for a nation 
which they have hardly even been to. But this foreign manpower base is still as large and skilled as it was when it was founded. Granted, it's expanded now to mostly people who couldn't join the military in their hometowns, poor third worlders who want both the high commodity of EU citizenship or the budget or the salary the legion gives you simply as a legionnaire but also more dubious types such as criminals and terrorists which have their own advantage given the legion has a unique insight into the inner workings of islamist groups as many of their members used to be islamists and they can integrate their own more successful elements of the tactics these criminals and terrorists use into their own as to get the best of both worlds for having the funding of a first world military and the insight of a third world guerrilla force. But some people still join simply for the promise of adventure that was sold to them. This being, give away five years of your life to France and you will have lived a great time, you will have gotten to see a whole lot of action, and you will be better off for it. How true that is, that is a different matter as a whole. Another thing the Legion is famous for is its training. The Legion's training has a very fierce reputation, some even calling it the worst or hardest training in the world. While this is almost definitely not true and an exaggeration, it does have a reputation for a reason, mostly because of their lack of safety nets. It's known in French training that, for example, ballistics trials, they use the real thing, and if you mess up, your life is on the line. For many of the mountain trials, they don't have any actual literal safety nets underneath you, and in Guyana, if you fail at any water courses, they aren't saving you. This sort of training and fatalities in training does give it its reputation, even though it is actually not that much harder. And this could also be partially due to the sheer brutality of many of the Legion's specialty schools around the world, most famously Guyana and Djibouti. The Legion's training happens over a wide variety of bases across the world now. Some of these names are quite French, and I'm going to try and pronounce it being an American, but I can't promise anything. The first big main base of the Legion is the Ogbon main base. This is where the Legion proceeds at its home. This is where the HQ is based. This is where training for this is where basic training and selection happens, and this is where most of the recruitment for the Legion happens. This is supported by the Castel Labri, secondary basic training base where recruits will go if the Ogbon main base is already all full, you know, to double the amount of recruits the Legion can process at any given time. Then there's Camp Kellis and Caf Raffaelli, which are more specific to different units of the Legion. And then there are three specialty schools the Legion has. The French Pyrenees base for mountaineering and mountain training mostly for the engineers, which double as mountaineers. The Djibouti base, which is the desert school, which many legionnaires of all units go through, but specifically the 13th Demi Brigade uses the most. And then there is the infamous AMF French Guyana base, which is sometimes known as the Man Factory due to how difficult it is. And this reputation is mostly true. I will not go into what it comprises in this video because that is a topic of its own. That is a topic meant for its own video. But it. But needless to say, it is not for the faint of heart. And if you want to see it, there are plenty of videos online where you can watch it happen yourself. Now, Legion training takes the form of mostly a four-week assessment and selection process followed by a 12-week basic training, and then specialty training of various lengths, depending on which, uh, which unit of the Legion you're going into, and then usually one commando course for most of the combat regiments, even though this is in no way guaranteed, the commando course is being 
either the Desert Commando or Jungle Commando based on where you'd be fighting more. Next, I will go over each combat unit of the Legion, their basic organization, and a little bit of information about them. First of all, we have the three inf infantry regiments. The first one being the second foreign infantry regiment, known as the second foreign, with the motto, Be Ready. It was founded in 1841 and serves under the 6th Light Armored Brigade, specializing in motorized infantry. It is made of 1,270 men and is the second oldest regiment in the French Foreign Legion, currently headquartered in Nimes, France. It is made of eight companies, five combat companies, one HQ and logistics company, one combat support company made of an anti-tank platoon, a direct combat support platoon, and a sniper platoon, and one landing support platoon. And on top of all that, it has one reserve company. The next major infantry regiment is the 3rd Foreign Infantry Regiment, known as the Jungle Regiment. It was founded in 1920 with the motto, Legion, Our Homeland, a play on the official French Foreign Legion motto, which is Legia Postria Nostrum, which is the Legion is our homeland. They are made up of 485 men and specialize in jungle warfare. They run the infamous Legion Jungle School, which every single member of the 3rd Foreign needs to go through. It is made of five companies, two combat companies, one HQ and logistics company, with the Jungle Training Center, the specific water mission support platoon, and the landing support platoon all underneath it, and one combat support company, mostly with various different rotating artillery platoons underneath it, and on top of that they have one reserve company, just like the second foreign. Next is the 13th Demi Brigade, known as the Excellent Phalanx. Founded, technically founded in 1940, operational a little bit before that, but not in the same name. Its motto is, In the Manner of Our Ancestors. It is made up of 1,300 men and specializes in infantry warfare and desert combat. Headquartered in La Caverie, France, it operates under the 6th Light Armored Brigade and is made of nine companies. Six combat companies, one HQ and logistics company, one combat support company, which under it includes a direct combat support platoon, a sniper platoon, and a landing support platoon, and one reserve company. It was also the only regiment of the Foreign Legion that served throughout the entirety of World War II. Next is the cavalry. There is only one cavalry regiment in the Foreign Legion, despite the emphasis on motor warfare they have, and it is the first foreign cavalry regiment, known as the Royal Etrangere. It was founded in 1921 with the motto, like no other, it was made up of 870 men specializing in mobile. It was made up of 870 men specializing in mobile warfare, fire support, and reconnaissance. It is headquartered in Ogbon, France, and operates under the 6th Light Armored Brigade. It is made of seven squadrons. One HQ and logistics squadron, three combat squadrons, two recon and surveillance squadrons, and one reserve squadron. Next, we have the engineers. The first foreign engineer regiment was founded in 1984 with the motto, proud of its past, self-confident in the future. It is made up of 950 men, it specializes in demolition and combat diving. Headquartered in, this is a doozy, La Don La Adossi, France, and it is made up of seven companies one HQ and logistics company, four combat companies, one hell of a support company made up of one, one deployment support platoon, one field organization platoon, one landing support platoon, one water production platoon, and one liaison and direct action reconnaissance platoon made up of the engineer combat divers team, formerly known as Dynops, the explosive ordnance disposal team, the Specialized Military Search Team, and the Weapons Intelligence Team, along with one reserve company. Next, we have the 2nd Foreign Engineer Regiment, known as the Mountain Regiment. It was founded in 1999. It is the newest Legion Regiment, with the motto, Nothing Prevents. Very cheery. 
It is made of 1,010 men, specializing in demolition and construction in urban and extreme weather conditions. Slash mountain conditions, obviously, given the name. It is headquartered in St. Christophe, France, under the 27th Mountain Regiment of the Main French Army. It is made up of eight companies, one HQ and Logistics Company, one Administration Support Company, four Combat Companies, one Support Supply Company, with under it a Deployment Support Platoon, Field Organization, known as the Overcoming Platoon, Mountain Engagement Support Platoon, the Explosive Ordnance Disposal, and Surveillance and Direct Action Platoons, with two Mountain Commando Groups which attach to the French Mountain Commando groups as the Legion's liaison, along with a weapons intelligence team. Along with, on top of all that, one reserve company. Now we come to the elite, or at least what's thought of as the most elite company in the Foreign Legion. It is the 2nd Foreign Parachute Regiment, known as the Rep. It was founded in 1955 with the motto, In the Manner of Our Ancestors. It is made up of 1,310 men and specializes in parachute and elite infantry tactics, with environmental specialties being company-specific instead of regiment-specific. It is headquartered in Corvu Calvi, Corsica, as part of the 11E BP of the French Army. It is made up of 10 companies, one HQ and logistics company, one administrative and service support company, and five combat companies, each with their own different specialties being urban warfare, mountain warfare, amphibious warfare, explosive use, and desert warfare. On top of this does one combat support company being a direct combat support company platoon, a machine gun support platoon, a sniper platoon, and the parachute commando group, the small elite of the legion which is thought to be the best fighters they have. This is also paired with the regimental maintenance company and the one reserve company customary of the Legion. Next we have the non-combat units. These are units which are mostly administrative but still serve a critical role, they just simply don't see combat, or at least aren't supposed to see combat. First of which is the 4th Foreign Regiment, known as the School of the Legion. It was founded in 1920 and made to its current form in 1976. Its motto is to build the Legion. It is made of 1,200 men. It's headquartered in Castelnaubry, France, and operates the training schools of the French Legion. It's made of seven companies, one HQ and logistics company, three training companies, one team leader training company, one specialist training company, and one reserve company. Next, we have the Foreign Legion Recruiting Group, founded in 2006. Its motto is Honor and Fidelity. It is made up of 130 men. It's headquartered in fontenay sur bois in Paris, France. It is in charge of recruitment for the Legion. It is made of two recruiting groups, the Paris and Ogbon recruiting groups. This is your recruiters for the Legion, obviously. Next, we have the Foreign Legion Command. It is founded in 1984, sharing the same motto as the last, Honor and Fidelity. It was made up of 115 men, headquartered in Ogbon, France, and acts as the administrative and research division of the Legion. It is made of the Synthesis Management and Research Bureau, the Human Resources Division, Security and Protection Division, basically the MPs, Influence and Heritage Division, manages the museums and the public image mostly, and the Mutual Aid and Solidarity Division. Next, we have the Foreign Legion Detachment in Mayotte, Mayotte is a small island in between Africa and Madagascar. It is owned by the French as a legacy of colonial rule, and then the Foreign Legion still maintains its historical and ancestral role of guarding random colonial backwaters. It is made of 50 men with the motto, Danger is my pleasure. Founded in 1973, it's headquartered in Ogbon, France and it runs the Aquatic Familiarization and Training Center. It specializes in aquatic warfare all over the Indian Ocean region, being the most combative of the technically non-combat units, and is made of a HQ and logistics company and one infantry combat company. And finally, the 1st Foreign Regiment, known as the Mother House. 
the first foreign regiment. It was founded in 1841. It is originally the first combat platoon of the Legion, but now serves a more administrative role. Its motto is Honor and Fidelity. It is comprised of 500 men headquartered in Ogbon, France. It is the acting commanders. Is the acting commanders of the Legion and selection officers for the Legion are in this group. It is made of the HQ and Regimental Service Company and the Legion Personal Administrative Company. This is the company that manages all Legionnaires pathing, passing through Ogbon, be they in basic selection or high command. And it also encompasses the Selection and Corporation Center, which is the integration center for new Legionnaires. They also include the Foreign Legion Services Company, which is most of the rest of the uh, minutia the Legion has. It has a Foreign Legion Music Band, the Foreign, the Foreign Legion Leave and Recreation Center, the Foreign Legion Reception and Accommodation Center, the Foreign Legion Disabled Veterans Institute, the Foreign Legion Museum, the Capa Blanca Magazine, which is the French Legion's unique magazine they run, Athleg, the French Legion's athletic team, and the home of the Legionnaire, which is a wine yard in southern France, which acts as a retirement home for Legionnaires. If someone serves their time, they get to retire to the home of the Legion and spend their days making wine and various arts and crafts projects, along with maintaining the Legion Museum in this picturesque wine yard in southern France. <laughs> Next, I will talk about the unique and odd culture of the Legion. It has many different themes in it. First being the semi-mythical status the Legion holds. Many of the general population know of the Legion, but think of it more as a legendary thing. Few even know it still exists. And the Legion itself seems to play on that and know what it is. It knows what it is they can get away with a lot more because they are the semi-mythical legion. Things which would get any other group court-martialed to hell instead gets them a slap on the wrist because, oh, they are the legion, they are the elite, they are the legendary foreigners. And this attitude also carries into their day-to-day -day operations with many, you know, with many thinking of themselves as above other forces simply because they are the legion. Next is the, the next cultural theme you should be aware of is the secretive nature of the Legion. The Legion are not exactly sharing people, be it because they're on the run from something or because it's simply how they are as an elite military force. It is hard to find information on them. They, are, they don't like to talk much about what goes on inside the Legion. And they have very cryptic and esoteric traditions about them. It causes sort of a club sort of a club feeling where they do not sort of distrust outsiders who aren't legionnaires don't wear the capa blanca but even though the legion is secretive in this way it does have its internal conflict the two biggest ones are the traditionalist versus the reformers being there are those who believe the legion should stay what has it always been a light infantry regiment an elite one and made of foreigners for france Others see the making of a true soft unit in the Legion and believe that it should give up some of the ways of the past and some of its traditions to the future to be more elite, to be more integrated with the French army, and to ultimately serve a greater role. Second big conflict is the willing versus the force. This is a, an internal conflict in the Legion where many criminals and people on the run, poor people and the like, who join the Legion purely out of necessity seem to hold a grudge against those who join intentionally for the adventure. This also extends the other way around, where many who join for the adventure, for the experience of being one of the elite warriors of the Legion, detest the, well, detest a strong word, but definitely dislike the war, the people who join simply because they have to, as below them because they are dregs, we are the true elite that want to maintain this fighting force. You know, that sort of thing. But, the Legion does have some more unifying things, which is, as we mentioned, they have no safety nets. But that is not just training that extends to combat. They have a doctrine of 
no retreat, no surrender. That is exactly what it sounds like. In the Legion, you either complete your mission or you die trying. There is no coming back non-victorious. This all comes back to the Legion's founding, and specifically the famous battle in the famous battle in the Mexican War in which I believe it was a company of legionnaires held off thousands of Mexican soldiers to the last man, with the Mexican general being so impressed he famously said, these are not men but devils. At least I believe that's how the quote goes. Next, I will go over where the Legion is currently fighting. First the official, then the rumored deployments. The official deployments of the Legion happen right now are in Mali, Burkina Faso, Lebanon, Iraq, the Ivory Coast, Senegal, United Arab Emirates, Mayotte, Martinique, New Caledonia, French Guyana, and France itself. Now, the rumored deployments are in Egypt, Libya, all across the Horn of Africa, and heavy rumors of the operations in Ukraine. The Legion seems kind of outdated in its structure. It's obviously most famous in the past. Seems like the best days are behind it sometimes. So why do, does it still matter? I believe that the Legion will change, but its current its current form it will serve a critical role to the future of foreign policy, specifically French foreign policy and its ability for intervention. In the modern day, many powers such as America will hire out mercenary agencies like Blackwater, various different freelance veterans, to act as the non-official military force to take the heavy, heavy casualties job, to, to take many of the jobs which have worse PR around them, simply paying them to be the fall men for what needs to be done for the nation, yes? While this isn't officially recognized, let's be real, you know what's happening. And I believe that the Legion could offer this. It could be the group of anonymous warriors that France could use to extend its obvious neocolonial goals. Again, let's be honest, we all know what's happening. Except, instead of it being mercenaries you have to pay a lot for, who are granted very skilled, but still you have to pay a lot for and rather small, France has a large-scale operational group, all with standardized trainings, all with standardized training of an elite group, almost like a more dispensable version of U.S. Army Rangers, all of which the French people do not care about the deaths of and is easy to hide the actions of. I think this sort of thing could cause them to be critical to French intervention abroad without official intervention. In fact, I believe that it would be so critical that many nations are probably going to try founding their own. Granted, the Ukrainians found under different circumstances, but Nations across the world are looking into similar solutions. Did the Russians to already take foreign manpower? As a matter of fact, there's talk of an American foreign legion, not officially, but it's a common idea. I believe that will happen one day or another. But nothing is certain. History is nothing if unpredictable. Anyone who tells you who can predict the future is either a liar or very overconfident. But history is nothing but unpredictable. Predictable. Anyone who says he can predict the future is lying to you or overconfident. So, the Legion may go into the, with the re other relics of the past, like pre-dreadnought halls and trench warfare, and fade into obscurity, or it could become more prevalent than ever. Either way, it will have served a critical role in French foreign policy and in French colonialism in the past, and will leave a permanent mark on our culture. And our culture... In either way, it's important to understand the role they did serve while they were here, or the role they will serve in the future. Yeah.